Thank you. Yeah, uh, hey everyone, good afternoon. Uh, I'm really, really excited to be here. I know it was a very long day today for you guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate for your attendance today. Uh, yeah, let me start with, um, you know, before we talk about all this journey that I have, right? Um, yeah, let, 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 me, let me ask you like a very funny question, but it, it, it will be like a very deep question for us uh, in order to understand about this like house. Imagine that if you need to choose between uh, two pills, right? Like uh, the, the blue pills and the red pills, like in the Matrix movie. The red pills, uh, the flexibility, freedom, and also scalability of uh, data leak, but you will living in the world of messy data, right? And the blue pill, in other hand, is a standard, accurate, reliability of data warehouse, but you will have a complicated to, you know, like a changes implementation. But uh, what if I told you that we can have both? Because it's just a false dilemma between the two. And there's another way. And today, in the next 30 and 40 minutes, I will try to explain what is the journey and also how we can achieve this uh, combination of data warehouse and data lake in Grab, especially for analytics Grab, and how we can leverage this for all the use cases that we have uh, within the analytics team. OK. My name is Zulfika Lazwari Molana. I am lead data scientist uh, in data products team and also data platform team, especially for the ML pods uh, team. My role is to enable the data science and ML platform and build the customer data science models to help Grab uh, for you know like uh, making the decision uh, for the for helping Grab uh, using data. And today uh, I will share more about our journey on how we can achieve the sweet spot between the data lake and also data warehouse. Uh, so yeah, before that, uh, maybe I will try to uh, introduce you about Grab. Um, yeah, Grab is the leading super app in Southeast Asia. Maybe you have heard about uh, Uber so much, right, in, in, in this uh, country. So technically, uh, Grab is, is Uber Southeast Asia. In fact, we have merged with Grab back in 2018. Um, and we provide everyday services for across Southeast Asia, more than uh, yeah, eight countries and 480 cities. And um, basically, we, we have like a ranging from, you know, like mobility services, like a four wheel for transport, you know, like what we have right now in US. But not only for wheel, we also have like a two wheels uh, uh, option because, you know, like in city in uh, Indonesia and then in Vietnam, two is quite famous there. And not only for two wheels, let's say we also have like a very cultural uh, three wheels option. Like in Thailand, we have Grab Tuk Tuk, uh, if, you, if you know about that. So we also have, uh, we also provide kind of like services in Grab. Not only for the mobility, but we also provide uh, the delivery services, like a delivery food, uh, package, and also for, uh, you know, groceries. Not only the deliveries, we also provide the financial services uh, through the Southeast Asia. Uh, so, basically, we have more than uh, 25 million monthly transaction users, over 9 million partners, which is the drivers, partners, and also uh, merchant partners, because we are not only uh, having the customers, like a consumer customer, but we also have like a merchant and also driver as our partners, with the more than 30 petabytes of uh, data. So with all, with all the data that we have, right? Having this privilege basically to serve uh, you know, like millions of Southeast Asia, we as a data team, which is data science, data analytics, and data engineering team in Grab, we aim to provide and also aim to, uh, to, to provide some best services possible using this data. Okay, uh, let me start by showing you a problem that we were experiencing as a data community in Grab. Um, and also the journey before we had a like house, uh, especially for analytics like house. Because why this is analytics like house? Because the end users, the downstream users that we have is basically all combination between uh, different persona in analytics team. Because we are not only the analytics team who handle like a, like a Power BI dashboarding or like Tableau dashboarding, but we also have like analytics engineering persona. We also have like an analytics data science persona. So yeah, let me start with the historical of uh, our journey. So we use data lake in the beginning. So the key advantage of this architecture is actually the flexibility, right? Because you can, you can process various data type from different sources, even like different type of data, like structure and structured data. 
uh, and it relies on the low cost uh, storage option to store huge amount of data. And another good thing of Data Lake is actually we can support multiple use cases. But not all the use cases are optimal. So let's take a look at BI workload. The data cannot be reused. Sometimes we need to create a repetitive uh, and also heavy queries to address this uh, BI persona. Uh, like uh, maybe like if you know about Data Mart, we need to create like a very heavy and also repetitive query. And for those reasons, we were trying to optimize our uh, architecture design by adding data warehouse into our architecture. So back in 2019, we have these two different combination of uh, data architecture. So we have data lake and also we have data warehouse, basically to enrich and also to, uh, to, you know, to, to, to cover uh, what lacking in data lake, which is to support BI use cases. The data warehouse has been proven to address what lacking data in data lake, right? They are great for BI use cases. Uh, with the consistent and also high quality data. But with a data warehouse as a standalone architecture, we were facing challenges to implement some changes because it might have a kind of like a domino effect when we change some data uh, with other tables. And in our use cases, we have quite a lot, like multiple uh, and, uh, data warehousing. The first one, we have a finance uh, data warehouse for the finance related data. Uh, and also we have the analytics data warehouse for products and also, um, you know, like a business kind of data. But the combination of these two data architecture, right, data lake and also data warehouse, uh, becomes some, uh, some uh, new problem with, uh, within our team, which is like a data silo problem, because the team need to basically use two different type of uh, way to read the data and also maybe two different types of data sets so it's a very massive problem with us because uh, in analytics team, as a downstream users, we usually do a lot of process, like uh, maybe do dashboarding, do ad hoc analysis and everything. So if we have these two different kind of architecture, it's a massive problem for us because the way we read the data is different and even the complexity of different uh, way to, to read the data is also there. So what is the solution? Remember, like what I mentioned, right? It's just a false, uh, like a false dilemma between the, these two different kind of data warehouse. So uh, basically, we can have these two different uh, data warehouse in the same time. So we use Lakehouse back in uh, 2021. It's one year for for us to have this journey. And um, let me introduce you to our analytics Lakehouse called OCD, right? So what is the OCD? We call it OCD because it's a one central data. So we want to aim something like a one single source of truth of data sets. So we call it one central data because we want to have a benefit of data lake and also data warehouse in, the, in one um, architecture design, which is analytics like house. In uh, as a scenario that we have right now, we have a different data sources stored in Hive Metastore in data lake where uh, we have thousands number of uh, data stored in the hundred of schema and it's it making hard for us to uh, for as a people to this uh, to people in analytics team and also in data science team to discover things especially for the data we solve this by introducing OCD OCD act as a marketplace of uh, analytics generated data sets right analytics generated data set it provides more a streamlined way on how people can access relevant data, they need to conduct their analysis or like ad hoc or even like a form modeling. With OCD, different persona can actually use the data for their needs or for their use cases. So for the data science persona, like I mentioned, we have data science persona within analytics also, they can build model within, uh, you know, with the full benefit of Spark and also uh, Delta Engine as a platform um, and also for the BI persona, they can still have a reliability and also the performance of, uh, of data warehouse uh, for their workloads. So we use Databricks as a platform um, uh, for data science persona, and we also have kind of in-house data science tools. And for the BI ad hoc uh, and also SQL workloads, we are leveraging the data SQL, uh, Databricks SQL, and also Power BI and also Tableau for you know for create a dashboard. In our one central data, we need to maintain the philosophy of uh, data warehouse in the standardization, right? Accuracy and also coherence. So the first component of OCD, OCD is actually the OCD central. So we have two different components within the OCD. 
The CD Central generates standard tables across graph and act as a single source of truth for the multiple persona. Uh, these are central data sets that are being maintained by the central team. So we have like a one dedicated uh, central team who manage this OCD Central because we, we need to, uh, to support the agility and scale. We cannot always uh, one central data, right? Like uh, we need to have a philosophy of freedom also within the OCD. So therefore the second component of the OCD is actually OCD federated. So not only the central uh, data set, but we also have the second component which is OCD federated to keep the, the philosophy of freedom of data lake. By nature, data team is the data producer. We need to create a, you know, like a business logic or models or kind of like artifact to support our business use cases. By empowering the data team uh, with OCD federated, more than uh, 50 plus number of uh, data teams in analytics within analytics itself can produce the data with the automate uh, certification process. Think of like a publishing app in the app store. So uh, it's uh, our marketplace of data. So we, we have this component. So let's go to, uh, to the detail of, for each component. So the first one is the OCD central. In the OCD central, we have a different component categories coming from a different uh, technical data owners, but under approach in storing and also reading the data using Delta Lake. So the first component of this OCD central is actually um, centralized data sets, which is we have analytics data warehouse. So we are trying to uh, convert our current data warehouse in, in, in analytics to, to be in the Delta format. So all the, the BI use cases still can use these data sets within the OCD. So we convert it as a Delta tables and we call it as an OCD ADW. The second component that we have is uh, OCD scribe. So we consolidate common use cases for the clickstream. Basically stripe, stripe is like a clickstream data because we want to build some uh, optimized table to save cost because when the user want to query this kind of like a clickstream data, because the clickstream data is very huge, I can say, it's like um, seven terabyte per data for this data. So we, we need to build this OCD data set, we call it OCD scribe for each tech family so there is no like a duplicate timeline to, to process these data sets and so on. Not only covering the business or product data sets, we also provide some single source of truth for the customer uh, data sets point of view aggregation. So we call it OCD C360. So C360 stands for a customer T60. For basically to create the aggregation level of customers so the user, the business user or the end users can just query this uh, customer aggregation level data for their workload to create like maybe segmentation data and everything. So the user doesn't need to build their own pipeline to generate what is the aggregation level of customers. So the aim is the single source of truth. The, lastly, to support specific operation, we also provide some uh, standardized approach to handling the data import and also external sources. We call it uh, OCD external. So with these uh, four different, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, I mean the, the, the next component is OCD uh, FDW. So it's like a finance data warehouse. It's the same like a ADW. And the last one is the OCD uh, external. We support also for, let's say, the Google Sheets because a lot of operation team in, 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 our, in our teams also still still using like a CSV or even like Google Sheets, right? So we want to standardize this, all the importing data. So with these five different components that we have in OCD Central, the aim is the same, which is we want to provide single source of truth for the uh, end users. OCD Central allow the central team uh, to build a pipeline from data ingestion in bronze layers. So we have like a different kind of layers in, in, in the like house. If you're aware, uh, we have a gold, uh, sorry, bronze, silver, and also gold tables. So starting from the, from the bronze, basically we, we, we use these uh, data coming from engineering managed table, such as like uh, even logs or even booking service tables. And then the subsequent transformation and also normalization produce data in the silver layer Basically, this uh, silver layer doesn't include any uh, uh, business logic or, um, you know, like uh, create any uh, transform heavy transformation. Basically, to, to optimize the downstream workload, so we do some uh, simple pre-transformation, such as like do some pre-join or, um, you know, like a data type conversion. And um, one of example that we have, like I mentioned before, is the OCD scribe as a silver layer that we have. 
to basically to reduce all the, the repetitive uh, uh, transformation. And um, last one is goal tables, which is the federated team um, can use and also refine uh, the data sets and then introducing some context specific in the goal tables. And we expect to have more than uh, 500 number of tables in goal layer. And the second component of OCD now is OCD federated. OCD federated also has helped to speed up our, uh, our previous ETL process. In our previous practice, right, the governance process that we had uh, required some very long and tedious process. As you can see, it's a certified, which is like a, you know, like a, a govern process, but it's a long process because it will evolve a lot of team and team to team alignment because we need to build like a data warehouse. So we need to discuss with the other teams. Uh, we need to align with the matrix definition and everything. So this kind of process is quite long. And although we have uh, freedom by allowing data team to create tables and write back the data uh, into the data lake, basically it will keep, uh, is a good kind of like a concept because it's allowing people to create anything from data lake and then save the data into uh, data lake again. It's a freedom, but with this freedomness of the data, we, we also produce a lot of uh, uh, tables inside of the production data sets. So it's like a fast but messy. It will produce more than 100K number of tables in the production, right? Over the time, it become more messy, and we end up with the spaghetti uh, problem models because we have like a too many lineages uh, and also interdependency between the data, data sets that like are very hard to maintain. So to address this, we come up with the concept called sandbox. So as you can see, we basically improve the certification process before we, we, we had like house and before we had a concept called sandbox uh, using this sandbox. So we can still keep the freedomness to build anything on top of the sandbox. And then once we have the sandbox data sets, we can have like a very fast process of certification process in place. And then we put it in our OCD federated. So what is the objective of sandbox? Sandbox is a temporary isolated area uh, per team. So we create one containers, like a, a temporary containers for every team that we have. So if we back to analogy of OCD federated as a marketplace or a app store, right? So we never publish our app in the, the, the day one, right? So every team is given a sandbox for them to play around with the data. So they can uh, literally put everything there like they create their own um, specific context uh, data and then they save it in the sandbox and then they can create a schedule I can, they can evaluate what is the data and everything right in the sandbox. And since it is isolated, the sandbox data set will never clutter the production data sets. So imagine like it's like a, a staging and also a production data sets, right? So roughly we have uh, 50 plus uh, based on the team that we, uh, I mentioned before, uh, sandboxes today. Um, and because of the data in the sandbox do not live forever because we don't want to maintain all the costs of this uh, storage uh, of the sandbox, right? So we implement some forcing function. We call it time to live. Uh, basically this forcing function to, to make sure the, 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 the storage that we have in, in our sandboxes is not too big. So we, we will evaluate every team three months. By, by the time we will try to evaluate what is the age of this table. So if, if the table is more exceeding more three months, then we will remove these tables. So how to make sure the, the users want to use this uh, kind of like a sandbox process and then promote the data set to production? So as I mentioned, right, if we go back to the analogy of the publishing app, the data set, uh, if they are ready to publish the app, the, the app in the app store, right? Basically, they will go to the publishing process and then um, uh, do a lot of like a uh, checking and everything. So similarly, in our context, in OCD uh, federated, when the sandbox is ready, let's say the user want to to promote this kind of data set in sandbox, we will have um, we will have a process to 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 publish uh, and also to. To, to basically to check all the, the data before we push it into production. We call it as a data governance checks to make sure all the data in sandbox will follow all the OCD standard that we have. And all this uh, process that we have is all automated. 
So behind the scene, we will use like a package. Uh, so in every cluster that we have in Databricks, we will install one package. We call it GrabOCD package. So the user just need to use one function to promote the data sets from sandbox to production. Uh, yeah, and then uh, we, we basically also leveraging uh, Databricks as a platform. So it will reduce a lot of time uh, um, from you know like a like a time to 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 build everything, and then um, we also reduce some effort uh, for promoting this production because we take out all the technical uh, difficulty within the analytics team because analytics analytics team is quite uh, have a quite a wide range of the technical uh, skills. So if we take out all this technical problem within the analytics team, basically they can they can just build their own pipeline in the Databricks and then they just promote the production, uh, the data to production without building any pipeline and everything. And the second one, uh, we, yeah, it, because we use Databricks as a platform, so we unlock a lot of capability of analytics team because they can use Databricks as a platform. They can explore a lot of, a lot of things like building some data science models or they can do a lot of, they can use a lot of UDF, let's say, so it will unlock a lot of capability in analytics team. And last one is, yeah, using this sandbox, basically we, hopefully we can reduce this like, uh, you know, uh, spaghetti problems, right? So we reduce a lot of unwanted table in production, so never clutter the production data sets. And if you if we go deeper into the how OCD federated works, basically, uh, within the sandbox, we we create something like a template uh, in 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 Databricks notebooks. So the users or the analytics team, they can just clone this uh, template, and then they can just uh, create their own uh, ETL pipeline. And we will use one function, as you can see, if you can see in the in the notebooks, we will have a lot of function within the uh, within the notebook itself because we pre-install the package in the cluster. So the user doesn't need to install anything, just use one function, import the, uh, the package, and then they can uh, use Databricks and then uh, ADLS because we are using Azure and using Delta, Delta Lake uh, format to save all the data set into a sandbox. And uh, once we promote the data to production under the hood of this process is actually we are using Azure DevOps to conduct some CI CD uh, pipeline to push the notebooks because we have two different uh, workspace like a staging and production. So the users, uh, user facing uh, platform is actually only uh, st staging. So the user cannot uh, enter to the production workspace. So we, we use this Azure DevOps to conduct some CI CD process to copy the notebooks from staging to production. And then uh, we also use uh, Azure pipeline basically to, 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 to trigger jobs to copying everything from, from uh, staging to production. And then once the resource, uh, sorry, once the resource available in production, so we, we use uh, Databricks and also uh, Azure Data Factory as a, uh, orchestration. And then we use Delta Lake and also ADLS generation to, to, to basically store the sandbox and uh, the production data sets. Uh, once we have a pipeline and also table registration uh, to the half meta store, like we mentioned about OCD, right? It's uh, basically we need to have one single source of two tables. The end user can access the data directly for, from a different um, analysis and also a visualization tools like a Databricks itself. We also use as a Power BI and even the user can just query the data from Presto. And uh, not only that, we, has, we also register all the, the pipeline uh, information to the, to the uh, data, uh, you know, like um, discovery tools that we have, which is Alation and also our in-house uh, data tracking tools. And uh, in order to, to, to track everything, we also enable this kind of like a um, monitoring process, which is we, we use the Azure function, select notification to notify the user if the pipeline, uh, let's say, has been broken and then they need to, f to fix it and everything. So let me walk you through the different user journey in, uh, within our analytics team. So we have a different user journey for this OCD uh, uh, team, basically. So the first journey is how, as an analytics team, if they want to build a dashboard. So this uh, diagram that I show you, basically this is like a comparison between when we use OCD and without OCD. 
So before we had OCD, uh, the user need to uh, go to the you know like the data discovery uh, tools that we have, let's say Alation, to to search some some relevant data or some some information that they want to explore. But it will end up with a lot of version of the data. Let's say data underscore Zulfikar version one, data underscore version two, and we never know which one is the 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 latest data that we can use. And even we cannot always. Uh, check what is the SLA of this pipeline or the, or these tables, right? We never know. Uh, is it like a maintained by the team and everything? So we end up to we end up with a, you know contacting different uh, data owner, and then we need to ask a lot of people like, hey, what is the latest data that we uh, that we can use for these data sets and everything? So it become like a very long process. Even after we know that okay, let's say this fashion is the latest fashion that we have, we need to create something like a you know, like a, uh, aggregation or even like a joint table, basically to combine all the scattered information that we have within the tables. And then once you have the table itself and then you store it again into the data lake, even like a different users can, can also reach to you and then ask you what is this uh, kind of like a data that we have in the data lake. So it's, it's a very long process and in fact it's, a, it's quite a messy uh, uh, process that we had before uh, we had uh, OCD, but when we had OC when we have OCD, basically we will we will have a single source of truth. So if the user go to our OCD um, uh, uh, tables, right? Like, let's say the the end user, which is analytics team, want to find uh, some data sets, we will only have like one version of single source of truth of the data with uh, uh, you know like the latest information, uh, like the. SLA because we have like a one dedicated central team who manage this pipeline, and the data quality is also uh, you know is, uh, is a is a good data quality because we we maintain everything. So the user doesn't need to do anything; they can just connect because it's the latest information that we have and it's a centralized data set. And the second journey uh, uh, that we have is let's say if the users or the analytics team want to build a ad hoc uh, process. So as an analyst, let's say if they want to build an ad hoc. Uh, they they still have a exactly same uh, obstacle. Uh, they need to find the data, and then they end up with a lot of version of the data and everything, right? And even uh, there is no like a clear segregation between the the uh, you know like the staging data set or the development data set uh, data set with the production data sets, because when I build like a ad hoc analysis, I can just put everything in the talik, and then it become like a you know end up with a lot of data in our in our uh, in our data lake. So um, even you know there is no um, uh, there is no like a one process for us to read the data and then if let's say if I want to read some different uh, if I want to expose this data set into a Power BI dashboard let's say I need to use a different way let's say Synapse and everything and then if I want to put it into a Presto I need to process everything on top of the uh, uh, notebook base let's say to process some ETL process but with OCD. There is a clear segregation between uh, staging and also production. So the user can just create anything on top of sandbox, and then uh, if they can also connect this sandbox directly to the Power BI dashboard. Let's say if they want to show the data set into a business users be, uh, without any creating any production data set, because uh, ad hoc is like a temporary data or temporary as an analysis. And uh, if they want to promote the data into a production, also is possible because they can just use a promote to production and then put it in the production data sets. So the benefit of this OCD for the ad hoc is uh, use cases is actually uh, we only have one channel basically because uh, for the development they can use Spark or Databricks or other platform and then they can connect directly to Power BI. In the production they can use also Spark and then they can read directly data to the our one uh, Metastore which is the OCD. And the last use, uh, user journey that we have is, uh, let's say, if the, uh, the data science persona in, within the analytics team, if they want to build the data science model. Uh, previously, the silo problem is there, which is uh, whenever we want to join, because data science, we usually combine a lot of uh, data types coming from, let's say, finance data or everything, right? So this data silo problem is basically uh, the biggest obstacle from this persona because they need to query from data warehouse, let's say, or data lake and everything. And then they need to combine the data into a data lake again, and then they save the data into our data lake, and it's quite a long process. But imagine if we have OCD, they can use, uh, let's say, they want to query the goal tables within the, the OCD teams. Uh, let's say we have OCD C360 and everything. They can just query the data, and then 
they can use these as uh, features to build the models, and then they put it in production. And uh, this is one of the, uh, like a more than one uh, of example, Vitalik use cases. I want to show you uh, how this OCD can also uh, help our uh, kind of like a data lake case use cases. So we have, uh, so the example that we have is that we have a merchant thumbnail image, uh, image recognition to help our merchants. So we build some, some data science model on top of it. And then we also have a customer lifetime value and also customer churn prediction because of this OCD uh, data set. So it's very easy for us to build a model because every single data is there. Uh, is a customer level aggregation table is also there. So uh, we will, we will uh, have a very, you know, like a, it's quite short for us to build the models because of these data sets. And uh, I want also to emphasize this uh, mod, uh, you know, like the, the OCD that we have, right? Not only uh, supporting these self-service ETL tools that I explained before, so we call it as a self-service ETL tools. So this uh, OCD, we create basically OCD Python package. Uh, we also support some uh, different, um, you know, process, which is we also support to have a self-service ML tools, which is we use Databricks Auto ML. So we integrate this uh, Databricks Auto ML into our Python package, so the users can just use a package to to connect with our uh, Auto ML uh, function in Databricks, and we also create a self-serving uh, ML ops. So why we need to have this self-serving ML ops? Because you know, like a uh, analytics team have a very uh, low capability to handling a lot of uh, technical problems. So we also want to make it like a self-service for the team to build a, a data science model and to keep the models like within the, our ML ops. So we make it a uh, self-service. I will explain the process uh, after this. And then the third one is, we also build our in-house ML platform within Databricks. So we build a function to have this citizen data scientist to generate some insight within the data that we have in OCD. I will explain also later. So the last one is we also support some uh, common UDF function within the package itself. So imagine that if we can create a lot of uh, UDF function, the user can just reuse that UDF uh, within the, the package. So when I mentioned about the self-service ML ops, right? So this OCD also can help this to standardize our self-service ML ops in analytics. So we use this pro, uh, promote to uh, you use this process of promoting to production as our data preparation and also data validation, because when we mention about this uh, production grid tables, right? So we we will we will also make sure that the pipeline is there and we manage all the pipeline. So this kind of promoting production is uh, is a standard process for us to validate. And then uh, we also will impl implement some uh, model quality checking using our Python package. So whenever the user uh, build the models, we will use a function to, to check the model quality. Uh, is there any like a duplication model within our analytics team and everything. And then uh, after we, uh, we have this model quality, we will trigger the uh, webhook because we, uh, you are using also Databricks uh, webhook for, for notifying the, the model approvers. To, to you know to, to know that oh there is a new model coming in and after that we will also trigger some uh, CICD pipeline basically to run some data and also model, uh, model job validation to make sure all the job um, is there so it's like a staging in production is it is there any data set in production and then when we check also the the models is there any like a uh, you know, what is the accuracy like, and everything. Basically, we trigger all these things with using a CI-CD pipeline in, in Azure. And then uh, once the, the test and everything is passed, basically, we will notify all the model approvers to, to approve the models. And if we approve the models, uh, we will basically deploy the model into the production workspace, and then we will put also the data uh, back to the OCD federated. And we also, uh, this is still in planning. Basically, we, we will also try to use our online serving in Databricks uh, platform. Uh, it's quite new, but yeah, we, we keen to use this uh, online serving also. Uh, and when I mentioned about the ML platform, the OCD package that we had also helped this to uh, create kind of like an in-house ML platform. So all the data scientists or citizen data scientists that want to you know, build some insights coming from our OCD data sets, they can use our function uh, coming from the OCD data and everything, and then they can use a Python. As you can see, this is one of a, a snippet that I have. They can just use a, like a very simple function 
to put the data into uh, uh, into a function, and then they will generate uh, get uh, all the insights directly within the Databricks notebooks. And uh, this is one of example uh, data warehouses use cases because we also want to uh, support this uh, uh, you know data warehouse problems, right? So this is like three of example, which is we have a self service analytics tools, so we can um, we can have like a no code kind of like a uh, self-serving tooling for the analytics thing to build some dashboard. We also have, um, uh, you know, like a dashboard for the marketing project and also for the country analytics dashboard. So they can just easily uh, use the data sets to build the dashboard. So OCD can also address what's lacking in the uh, data warehouse, which is the flexibility. So we want to keep this kind of like a spirit to create a flexibility to build a dashboard. So our like house journey will not stop here. So we want to make our OCD become more coherent, which is making more single source of truth within the analytics team. Uh, and we also want to uh, address all the persona, like when I mentioned before, right? Or the analytics team that we have have a different kind of persona, starting from uh, low code uh, persona, which is like a bit more on the business function products, or even like a SQL heavy persona, so which is we want to introduce uh, a more connection between the three no connector and everything, right? And then more heavy persona, which is the notebook or code pro persona, we call it. And um, we, we want to support more uh, uh, OCD Python package for this kind of persona. And uh, not only that, uh, we also want to support our business users and also product function for uh, more like a self-service tooling, which is our citizen data scientist. Yeah, uh, thanks everyone. Is there any question? Thank you, Zulfikar, for uh, sharing your amazing and uh, successful journey at Grant. Uh, uh, thanks for the presentation. And uh, <clears throat> it looks like uh, you have a huge project. How long this project uh, took to execute? It means Sorry. completion, the implementation part. Sorry, can you repeat it again? How long? Oh, how long to implement everything, right? Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, this is like journey. So we start from 2000 and, uh, 2021. So it took like a one year plus for us to implement this, all the process. Yeah, by total it's like one year plus. It's a hundred K tables in one year. Yeah, I mean still continue, but yeah, we aim to have like this 500 plus in the gold tables, yeah. Okay. And everybody is coming out from the enterprise dat data warehouse, like, you know, and the creating fit for, for purpose models. So why did you come up with this uh, OCD? Like, you know, it's a huge data warehouse kind of thing you created. Is there any specific reason to have all the tables in one place instead of creating a fit for purpose models? Yeah, so the, the idea is basically to, to support a different persona, like a data science persona and also the warehouse persona, because when we have these two different data architecture in the same time back in 2019, uh, there are a lot of uh, obstacles within the analytics team. Maybe in other team is not a problem, but within the analytics team, because we build uh, a lot of things uh, like uh, for the business users and everything, we are facing this problem because whenever we build the models and or maybe the insights or the dashboard, we will end up with this kind of like a data spaghetti problem and also lineage problem. So that's why uh, with this concept of OCD, we want to keep it like a one single source of truth. Uh, in order to make it our team uh, easy to build anything because there is no data duplication, there is no uh, different kind of uh, information. Even when we build the dashboard or for the business users, the, f the, the, the metrics that we explain to the user is fixed, like a never changing because of this single source of tools. So everyone will rely into one of these tables. Yes, that's, that's, that's true, it's a big challenge. Thank you, great presentation. I have a question regarding the sandbox environment. Is yeah. that now per sandbox, one sandbox per workspace? Uh, so it's a one sandbox per teams. So we only per have uh, two different workspace right now, the staging and also production uh, workspace. Uh, and user can only use a staging workspace. Like a staging is basically like a development plus staging, kind of development and staging. So we uh, create an interactive cluster for every team. By total, we have 50 plus uh, teams in analytics team. 
So, uh, and one team, we also create one uh, location, which is like one uh, storage within the, analytics, the, the team itself. So only the team can access that storage. So let's say if uh, I'm part of analytics A team, I can only query the data there, and team B cannot query the data. So it's like a very isolated area. It's so, so it's not a one workspace. So it's a one. We only one. We only have one workspace, but a different storage account. Partition of resource within that workspace. Yes, correct. Okay. I see. Got it. Thank you. No worries. Uh, so for the productionization, production, productionization process, right? Yeah. Is it currently still manual process? Or because you mentioned that you managed to cut down the timing into one day. Yeah, so it's not manual process at all. So we have this kind of like a long process when we, uh, so it's like a auto trigger pipeline. Whenever the user use this function to promote uh, to the production, we will trigger uh, a lot of like a CICD process and all like an automated process to build the pipeline. So it will use a lot of REST API to connect with the ADF pipeline, let's say, to build the pipeline. So it, everything is automated. So there's no like a manual process. Everything like a trigger based on the action of the user. Let's say if the user promote the production, then we will trigger everything to build the pipeline automatically. For you to do all the checks. Sorry, four hours? It still took 24 hours for it. What you mean by one day, it means No, it hours. can be less than uh, 24 hours, yeah. So immediately after the user promote the production, we will build the pipeline, and then we will do, let's say, backfill and everything in the immediately after the, the user promoting to production. Mm. Okay, thanks. No worries. Any other questions? Oh, one more. Can you talk about how those two areas are used over time? Are you seeing more trend towards a demand towards the OCD or less or is it kind of equal do you see more people using the sandbox and what do you project into the future what do you hope to see in the future yeah so uh currently within the analytics team um uh, we already yeah as a as a journey we already have like a lot of uh, pipeline in the production uh so in the futures we want to bring this kind of uh, flexibility to build pipeline and but still in the govern process so currently we have like more than uh, 600 tables uh, for within the OCD said, uh, federated, but still in the certified pro uh, process. So in the futures, a lot of teams, um, so let's say if, if we have a federated tables uh, and then I want to put it uh, in, in the OCD central as a, as a central single source of truth matrix, we also want to create this kind of like a promotion process from the OCD federated to central. So imagine like, let's say if I create a federated process and then I want to promote this also to the central layers, can, I can also create some uh, kind of like a promotion, but that one is the in the future. So currently we still have like a two different type. Okay, one yeah. last question. Hi, um, you mentioned that uh, for the sandbox environment, right, the teams are given the freedom to create their own data pipelines and all this, right? How do you prevent like duplication of data sets, you know, from OCD, the, the, the central one and your federated one, and would it be like a lot of uh, yeah, duplication of data sets? And, and just like you mentioned, right, you're going to promote it to OCD. Hmm. Um, will there be like, how do you design the data model? Are you like going with the, you know, dimension, facts dimensions kind of modeling, data modeling, or, or, or not? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, first, sandbox is uh, isolated. So, every time the user create the tables within the sandbox, we, we, we will never have like a duplication within the team itself. But once the user want to promote the data set into a production, which is OCD federated, we have this kind of like a, a, a you know, like a certification process, govern data govern process. And we use a schema and also table name. So the schema itself will be like a, a OCD underscore and team name. Because we use the sandbox name. Let's say the sandbox name is OCD underscore A, which is the team A. So we will use this like uh, abbreviation of the name as a schema in the OCD uh, federated. So we'll never have like a duplication kind of like a tables because every team will have their own uh, specific, uh, you know, like a, a suffix of the table name. How about the data? Are you talking about the baseline? Yeah. Yep. So for the data itself, because 
yeah, in order to make sure the data is not duplication, right? The data governance checks that we have is also make sure, let's say if we if we check this kind of metrics is already available in the production, we we will we will try to avoid the user. So uh, under the hood is basically checking is there any, like a similarity between these metrics. So if there's a similarity, we will try to avoid to to promote. But yeah. Yeah, but that one is if the user want to promote it into a central data set, not in the federated process. Yeah. Thank you, everyone.